Does it have a sound to it? Probably. Okay, so here he is scraping off the burr comb. Burr comb. Putting it over in the container. Where it's all the wax. Ex excess wax. Good paint jobs and bad paint jobs. And here to show us a good professional paint job is Mark Malayla. Mark, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. What we have here, Kevin, is we have a mock-up of a wall. This is what a nicely filled out frame of honey looks like uh, from the honey box or super as we call them. And it's totally capped, nice and white, and weighs about three pounds. And here we are, look at that. Two gorgeous frames. There's another one on the ground. And then here's one, here's a bunch left out of the box it was taken from. Just perfectly filled out. Nine frames per box. One less than a standard brew chamber. Now it's recording. Now it's recording. Now you okay, capped now I flip it. Okay, flip the frame over <coughs> to do the other side. Now this is drawn out fuller, you can see. So watch, well, how, maybe. watch how much easier it is to take the wax off. And that's a hot knife. And that's a hot electric knife. Capping De knife. Decapping knife, not capping. It's decapping. Oh, say. Sorry. And you just keep running down the frame until all the honey is exposed. Like that. And there are some places that you miss that you don't hit because it's too low or it's not on the same grade as what you're extract uh, as what you're cutting off. And this is the manual way. Of course, commercially they have automated machines to do all this wonderful job here. Okay. Turn it off, and then you have to get the, the high or the low. Okay, here's what happens. Just pull back so they can see. Pull back further over here. <coughs> here's what happens when you have too much burr comb. That's additional comb other than the comb and the honey in the frame. This is all burr comb. They put that in between frames when there's a lot of honey coming in or the space is too wide. In this case, the space was too wide and there was a lot of honey coming in, so both. And here's more burr comb right here. You have to cut it with your tool. Pop your frame apart from the other frame. Here's what I'm talking about right here. Oh, that's just pure honey. Just pure honey, and that's what it looks like when you... Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Don't get so close. All right, I'm done. Okay. Take okay. it and put it over in the extractor. Down into the basket. Look down. This is made to fit shallow, medium, and large frames. And one in each basket. Okay, let's Ready? open up the thing while I've got this recording. And there's the honey gate. And the honey's in there. You open it up. And this is a nice grade one plus honey. Each one of those shallow frames holds about, uh, well, there's nine frames and there should be about 30 pounds in a shallow box. So you figure the nine into 30. <coughs> so the little pieces of wax, of frame. the little pieces of wax that you see coming through there are strained before we put them in jars. So you have pure honey. Nice little pieces of pollen to help you with your allergies. Don't strain the pollen out, it's good for you. Okay. Now it's recording. Okay, now this is how you extract it. Shoot down in there. Get up here and look down in there so you can see. You spin the comb in the frames and you keep spinning and it throws it out against the wall of the extractor. It's like a glorified centrifuge. You put three? There's three frames. Three baskets to hold three frames. You do one side gently 
to increase the speed slowly so you don't destroy the wax frame in the frame. And then you get faster and faster and faster. And then you slow it down. And you take it out. And there's what it looks like when it's extracted. Almost all of it extracted out of the frame. You flip the side that hasn't been extracted like that and put it back in. And you do that in each basket and you start all over again to spin. Facing out. Facing toward the sidewall of the extractor. And then you may have to do it again to get the residual. And then here's the last one. And here's one little tiny honeybee on the side from his home. There we go again. Is it still recording? Mm hmm. This is a case where haste does not waste necessarily, but just consistent speed. And shoot down here at the bottom of it. Okay, now we're recording again. Now it's all clean. Now will go back in the hive. Right over here, watch what you're looking at. Make sure you're looking through that to see what you're shooting at. We'll leave one frame out. So we'll have working room. Yeah, so we know where we left off. Now open that up so they can see. Sure there's no bees, there isn't. Okay, this is what a frame looks like after it's been extracted. You just run across it, I'll show you. You've cut the cappings off and you've spun it in the honey extractor or centrifuge, if you will, and now I can bring it up to you and show you real close. They're empty cells. They turn it around carefully. I can show you again the other side. This was freshly drawn out wax this season. That's why it's a nice and white. Normally, it can be darker if the wax cells have been reused. And you can reuse these over and over. All you have to do is cut the, cup, the caps off to extract the honey. So once the, the cells are pulled out, they can be used as storage containers for, for several years before you probably have to recycle the frame and put some new ones in. Put this back in the in the high, in the super or box, if you will, high box. And here's and one next to it that I'm getting ready to decap, and it's full. As you can see the difference. Okay, that's got the caps on it still, and it's nice and white. It's been done this season. So now we're outside and we're looking at the solar extractor that I made. Uh, which is a glorified box with a shelf in it to hold pieces of wax which are, are heated by the sun's rays through this clear plastic sheet on top and then if I pan down close here you can probably see the wax actually dripping into the pan at the bottom of the box and it does that long enough, you add enough wax, 
each time so that it basically fills the pan and that's how you get rid of your uh, capping wax and reprocess it and you can use it for candles and you can use it for carpentry work and all kinds of different things wherever you want to use beeswax one of the most expensive and one of the best waxes that you can buy all made by a natural process the old worker bee